Senator Capito. Thank you, and thank you both, not just for your service, but for being here with us today. It's good to see both of you again. Uh, my questions are, uh, first of all, I wanted to ask about cyber. Obviously, we're, we're facing more cyber threats at every level and uh, in every aspect of our critical infrastructure. And from what I understand, the Guard is already playing a um, critical role in domestic response to cyber attacks including through our Critical Infrastructure Battalion at the Army Interagency Training and Education Center in my state of West Virginia. This unit supports a number of DOD and DHS programs. Uh, is there a more direct role for the National Guard to play in cyber, specifically using them as a liaison force between the federal government, the states, and the local and state critical infrastructure? Do you all have, uh, what would your response to that be? Senator, I think what I would say is, you know, we, we try to leverage all of the cyber expertise across all three of our components, active, guard, and reserve, and certainly there's a lot of great cyber expertise in the guard. I, I think trying to have a one-size-fits-all program with the guard is challenging because, frankly, the level of expertise varies from state to state, and also, frankly, so, you know, 85% of our critical infrastructure is in the private sector, and so there's a tremendous amount of diversity. But I can tell you that I know uh, General Barrett, who's the, the Army Cyber Commander, works very closely with the Guard uh, to try to make sure that we're making the best mm -hmm. use of them and that we're also retaining, frankly, that capability, which is very in demand right now. Yeah. General George, do you have a response? Yeah, I just would, um, and having deployed with some of these experts in the in the Guard, I think what makes them very unique when they come into your formations is a lot of them work this in their daily jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. And and really keep up a, a skill level, which is, which is really helpful for us. So we are constantly looking. We're in discussions right now with the Guard on, you know, what adjustments we need to make. I do think that um, that is part of our continuous transformation, looking at how we um, are, our, our cyber formations. Again, I, I think that's one of the things that's made the world much smaller with space right. and cyber. Um, so we're constantly evaluating how we can get better in that space. Good, good. Well, on Friday, uh, we had a great announcement uh, in Huntington, West Virginia, at Marshall University in a Marshall University, West Virginia University collaboration. They're, they're friends now, unless they're on the football field, is what, uh, what the bottom line was there. But uh, it was the DOD National Center for Excellence for Cybersecurity and Critical Infrastructure. They're trying to develop the workforce, but it's a really great collaborative effort between private sector, uh, academia, the DOD, and uh, the Guard and U.S. Cybercom. So uh, I, I think we're moving in the great, great direction in West Virginia. Very excited about the potential for that project in our home state. Um, my other question, my next question is on Army soldier-led innovation programs, uh, providing obviously weapons to Ukraine, uh, illuminated some of our shortfalls and some of where we're doing really well. And I've been a big supporter of soldier-led soldier innovation through the Army DEVCOM's Pathfinder program and the Accelerating Force program. These programs help to tradition, transition our weapons uh, and our tech by actually putting it in the hands of our military in, um, before they're, it's actually as an experimentation type of thing. So you can get on the ground um, reactions from folks that are gonna be using these weapons, what lessons can be learned. Um, what is the Army's plan to increase funding for these types of soldier-driven innovation programs? And uh, can we get new technology solutions into soldiers' hand for experimentation? Because I think it will, will uh, bring great um, successes to us. So, General, I don't know if you want to start with that. Sure. I'm wishing there was more time on the clock to talk <laughs> about this one. Um, so we are we're doing what we're calling transformation and contact. And I would love to have our team come up here um, and and kind of lay that out what that we're doing. But I I what we're doing is exactly what you you know if you infuse a formation with technology and then see how they actually mm -hmm. use it and we have the developers that are down there that make software adjustments we have the drones that are there and we make adjustments to them that's what we're doing so we have a brigade that's um, going to go over to Europe we have a brigade now in the 101st um, we have a brigade that's out in the Pacific and they're getting we're fixing their network 
Um, we're adding e electronic warfare, UAS, counter UAS, all of those capabilities. And what this means is we're not going to buy stuff, you know, that say, hey, this is going to be here with us for 20 years. We're right. going to innovate exactly what right. you're talking about. I just was down at, um, at Stewart, um, and I know we have partnerships with uh, universities in West Virginia. Right, and, and you have they a, are there's innovating. a facility on, yeah, Clay they're, County. They're making their own, um, as an example, they turned what had been a, a vehicle that was, uh, you know, manned, they basically turned it into a, a breaching vehicle that was completely automated. So, I mean, oh. these are soldiers that are doing these things. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to come up with how we can 3D print parts that cost $20 and, you know, took us six months to get to, to actually 3D printing um, 16 of them within a minute, and they cost 12 cents each. So wow. these are soldiers that are doing these things. I think that technology has changed that much. We're going to have to... Yeah adjust with the times. Well, thank you. It also seems to me, and you, my time is up, but not only is it a cost saving on the production, but you're not wasting money on things that may not, in theater, actually perform as that exactly as, as intended or as thought could be. Thank you all both for being here. It's good to see you. Thank you.